Um, this is a workshop session. Donna, our city clerk, could you please do the call to order? I apologize for making you rush. We just don't have Nicole here yet. Yeah, she'll be here in a minute. Okay. Um, Councilmember Santos? Here. Councilmember White? Here. Councilmember Lara? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Martinez? Here. Mayor Carroll? Here. Thank you. Do I have any uh, requests or action items prior to opening the public hearing? I would open the public hearing at 5.10 p.m. Um, let's begin with the staff report and then we'll take public hearing actually at the end of that. So would you change that opening time? Thank you. This is the general plan preferred alternative land use map discussion with uh, staff direction on alternatives for moving forward. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Mayor Council. Um, at the December 19th meeting, we brought back to you, we brought to you a general plan update and talked about the alternatives. From there, we were directed to send out notifications um, to all of the property owners in the area of change, including the county. So we sent out a um, notice in the mail um, and included a link to a survey that we did, a, a new survey. Um, and I have our representatives here from Ramey and Associates to give a presentation. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and uh, members of the council. My name is Simran Malhotra and I'm a principal with Ramey and Associates. I also have Monica Guerra with Ramey and Associates, and uh, we have a short presentation for you today. First, overviewing the preferred land use alternative that, if approved today, will go forth for further analysis in the general plan and the EIR, and also to present to you the results of the, the community survey that was conducted over the course of the last several weeks. So as, as, you, as we all know, uh, the general plan establishes the long-term vision for a city and its sphere of influence. Uh, the state of California requires every city to have a general plan to guide its growth, and it requires every city to update it on a regular basis. Uh, the general plan then becomes a guide for local decision-making with regard to land use decisions. It also provides the land use framework and uh, provides goals and policies for city, various city ordinances, plans, and guidelines, including the zoning ordinance. So we started this pro update um, about a year ago in, um, in the spring of 2017 uh, with an analysis of existing conditions. We also conducted extensive visioning over the summer and early fall and developed plan alternatives, which as Rebecca mentioned, um, we shared with you in, at our meeting with you in December. Um, we met with the community at all stages of the, of the plan so far, of the project so far multiple times. We had stakeholder interviews, we had meetings with the task force, um, had a community workshop, held focus groups, and conducted four different online surveys. Uh, we received extensive feedback, uh, especially through the community surveys. And uh, based on the input we received at those surveys, we prepared the three alternatives that were brought to you um, in December. The, the guidance we received from you led to the development of a preferred land use uh, alternative, which was then, again, the subject of a new survey, which was um, conducted over the course of last month. And as I said earlier, we'll review the results um, shortly. And the final plan will then become the basis for an, for the analysis in both the general plan and the EIR. Over the course of the project, we have developed a vision statement for the general plan, and it's based on what we heard from the community, which essentially said that Beaumont is a great place to live, and its a natural setting and its small town character play a big role in that desirability. Uh, so based on that 
feedback, we developed a vision statement which is up here on the screen, and I'll just read it out to you. Beaumont, where we value our small town feel, our community heritage, and our natural setting. We are committed to encouraging economically sustainable, balanced growth that respects our long history while meeting infrastructure needs and protecting our environment. Beaumont's community pride and rural mountain setting sets our city apart as a vibrant and healthy community with local access to retail services, jobs, and recreation. So based on this vision statement and um, the feedback we received from the community, we looked at the area within the city and uh, it can be um, broken down into four parts. Areas which are preserved, which you can see here shown in green, which are areas where there are protected or open space uh, resources. Areas shown in uh, light yellow are areas are the areas of maintenance, um, which are essentially maintaining existing land uses in stable neighborhoods. So a lot of the residential neighborhoods that are existing today are fall within this category. The next category shown in the in the orange are the enhanced categories, which is we are these are the areas we are trying to revitalize with some moderate change. And finally, the areas in this darker reddish tone are areas which are evolving or transforming um, with the goal of realizing the city's vision of promoting community character, identity, and economic development. And this could mean either intensification of land uses in some areas, but it could also mean lowering densities in others. And growth would be focused along the 79 corridor and um, more protection be uh, offered and lower densification happen along the, the areas in the sphere of influence. So based on um, that in more detail, um, here are the various elements of the preferred alternative that was refined for your input. Um, Starting with a mix of jobs, retail, and uh, services along the Highway 79 corridor, uh, we have uh, the creation of a downtown area, a downtown mixed-use uh, um, designation along 6th Street around where we are today. Uh, this extends along Beaumont and all the way along 6th to, to, the, edge of the, uh, to the end of the city limits along 6th. Um, Lowering of density along the in the sphere from half acre lots to 40 acre lots um, to a rural residential low designation, 10 acre lots closer into Potrero, and the creation of a traditional neighborhoods with 7,000 average of 7,000 acre lots closer in again to Highway 79, and then. Um, more of a mixed use and higher density residential uses on the east side of Highway 79, mm -hmm. which would be closer to the future transit station proposed on Pennsylvania and uh, uh, north of 4th. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, by lowering densities along uh, in the sphere area, we are protecting the hillsides uh, and maintaining views to, uh, to, to the mountains to the south. Um, one other aspect of, um, of the preferred alternative is the jackrabbit area, where we are proposing um, recreational uses in that area more, um, which are less intensive than what's proposed there today, which is, again, half-acre uh, half lots. And now I'll have uh, Monica go briefly go over the survey, um, which I believe you all would have received uh, as well and may possibly may have participated in as well. <coughs> Good afternoon, Council. Just one point of clarification. The traditional neighborhoods, um, it's not 7,000 uh, acre lots, it's 7,000 square foot lots. Just a, a slight little. No, 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 it's okay. I, I heard some whispers, and so I, I want to clarify. 
Um, Jamie, can you introduce yourself, please? Say yeah, your name. absolutely. My name is Monica Guerra. I'm a, a consultant with Ramey and Associates. Uh, so I wanted to review the results of the community survey. Um, the survey was open between January the 12th and January the 28th. We had a total of 736 response, a total of 736 responses. I want to clarify, even though there were 736 responses, it does not mean that there were 736 people that responded every single question. Um, we do know, based on self-identified information, that there were 27 people that identified living in the county. Uh, there was an English and a Spanish version of the survey distributed. Um, respondents were asked to provide input about five key areas of change, and we'll be reviewing that um, in a few minutes. Um, the survey was structured in a way where respondents were also given the choice of basically saying whether they wanted to respond to each area or, or not, so yes, no question. Um, and in terms of how we promoted the survey, it's via Facebook, website, the email list, uh, the task force, youth group, and um, a notice to property owners uh, within the city and the sphere of influence that were uh, impacted by the highest change. Uh, in terms of demographics, uh, based on self-identified information, we know that there was 93.42% of respondents live in the city of Beaumont. Responses included representation from the entire city. Um, but the lowest participation was from downtown, 0.56%. There is approximately 3.79% that identified living in the county. Highest participation rates were from the following age groups, 25 to 44, that was 42.76%. 45 to 64, 24.45%, and 65 or older, 29.64%. Uh, the following, following race and ethnic groups had the highest participation, white, which was 67.78%, and Hispanic or Latino, 19.31%. Um, we also know that females had a higher percentage of participation in the survey at 59.4%. So now moving into each um, of those key areas of change, the first one was downtown. Um, based on a question about height, 66.04% uh, of respondents prefer a mix of one and two story buildings. We also know that 62.05% of respondents preferred angled parking. Um, when, respondent, when survey respondents were asked about specific types of features that they preferred and that they pri prioritized in downtown, the ones that came up the highest were one, uh, public spaces, so like a plaza or a park at 55.26%, wide sidewalks, we specifically indicated 15 foot or more at 51.08%, slower car traffic, 41.64%, flashing crosswalks, 36.38%, and pedestrian scale lighting, 34.83%. Just as a point of reference, um, we also noted what uh, kinds of responses we got from people who were living in the county. Even though responses largely aligned, um, we know that slower traffic and pedestrian scale lighting were tied at 39.13% as the third priority. Uh, in terms of other comments, so these were open responses from um, survey respondents that kind of came up quite a bit. There are some concerns about downtown. Number one concern is homelessness. Um, there's concern about the streetscape, so uneven sidewalks, uneven streets, potholes, things of that sort. Um, missing or a lack of uh, street markings, so, so you know it's hard to see where the crosswalks are at, it's hard sometimes to see where the lanes are at. Um, there's a desire for additional lighting. Um, so consistency of lighting down, down streets, but also thinking about street lights and even thinking about the shape of light of lamp posts or the type of lighting that's used, people wanna see more of that. Um, and more generally, there's a lack of events and things to do in downtown. Um, so people generally you know, alluded to, hey, we, we'd like more pedestrian traffic in, in downtown. Again, just for context. Question, yes, Mayor. Um, before you move on to the next one, um, could you define pedestrian scale lighting? Is that what you're referring to when you say the street lamps and lighted bus stops, or is that something else? Yes. So pedestrian scale lighting was given as an actual cho choice, but when um, people responded in other comments, they made other references that were more specific to things that they liked, and so those were the things that came under that. But yes, that would fall under the okay. category of uh, pedestrian scale lighting. Is it more than that? Uh, is it more than, than those three than things? Than just what you've itemized here. Are there other features um, that you... I mean, know? we. I, I think um, we're thinking of making sure that whenever someone is walking down the sidewalk, they feel they're safe, right? And so thinking about the distance between light posts, also thinking about how high okay. it is, um, things of, of that sort. Thank you. No problem. And Monica, when you uh, asked for downtown, you um, specified, uh, you clarified 
Absolutely. So um, when let me make a distinction. When we asked um, survey respondents to identify what part of the city or the county they lived in, we provided a map that indicated each of the areas um, and what we were, con you know, what we were including within each of those areas. But in addition to that, for each one of these sub areas, we provided a map that only focused on that specific area, so people knew what part of town we were talking about. Thank you. No, absolutely. So the second area is a Sixth Street extension. Um, we're now thinking about the extension of downtown all the way to Highland Springs. Um, majority of respondents prefer one-story corner buildings, um, and the majority of respondents prefer housing behind retail, 45.96%. Um, uh, community members in the county also identified wanting the one-story uh, buildings on the corners, but chose uh, multifamily housing over uh, housing behind retail. Just to clarify the distinction here is they're both types of multifamily housing. It's just that one is the housing is included behind retail and the other one is just multifamily housing. So in the second part of the survey, we actually began with a question um, to survey respondents about um, planning for change. So we presented respondents with four key trends across the region. So this is across the entire Inland Empire. Um, and then um, we asked respondents, should the city plan for this change? Uh, overwhelmingly, 93.02% of people that responded to the survey said yes, we should plan for this change. Um, similarly, people that responded in the county, 92% of them uh, said we should plan for that change. So moving uh, into the third area of change, the urban village south. Um, when we asked people to rate top amenities that they'd like to see in the urban village south, uh, these were the things that were rated the highest. Restaurants, 81.99%, so that was the overwhelmingly number one uh, response. Followed by movie theater, 62.44%. Open air shopping, 60.21%. Entertainment, 40.82%. And walking paths, 34.48%. When we compare that to what respondents identified in the county, um, we see that the only real difference is that walking paths is a second priority, uh, and movie theater actually moves down um, a little bit. Uh, in terms of destination points, so what do people want to see in this urban village south? Uh, top response was retail. 52.52% of respondents um, said they wanted retail. Uh, second response was a transportation hub, followed by jobs. When asked about the specific uh, character, so height, of residential um, multifamily housing, uh, multifamily housing of two stories was the, there was a top response. Um, for community members that identified living in the county, Top rated destinations are retail, transportation, and instead of jobs, the third priority was actually education. Um, county residents agreed with the idea of a two-story multifamily housing in the urban village south. Moving into the fourth area, which we asked um, respondents specifically about uh, traditional neighborhoods, um, we there was a preference when we asked survey respondents about whether they preferred for all housing to look the same or for there to be a variety of housing styles. Um, the majority of respondents said they, they preferred a variety of housing styles. So 76.18% said um, that. When they were asked about top rated features that they'd like to see in a traditional neighborhood, these were the things that came up at the top of the list. Uh, neighborhood serving retail, 79.15%. Multi-use trails, 60.89%. Followed by a mix of uses at 56.46%. Parks for Recreation and Gathering at 56.27% and walkable blocks at 48.15%. When, um, when we look at the responses for people living in the county, they also preferred a variety of housing styles, so that's consistent, 90%. Um, but when you ask them about top rated features in a traditional neighborhood, multi-use trails was at the top, so that's compared to neighborhood serving retail across the city, followed by, again, neighborhood serving retail, continuous network of sidewalks, and parks for recreation and gathering. So we largely see some consistency. Uh, uh, the continuous network of sidewalks came, you know, it, it bubbled up a little bit more in the county responses. Um, so last section, south of Potrero. Uh, when uh, survey participants were asked about specific type of features that they'd like to, to preserve, the top rated feature were panoramic views, uh, overwhelmingly, 86.68%. We also see this in the county. Um, the, the other features, there was a little bit more of a mixed bag, right? I mean, I think people want to preserve as much as possible. So we see sensitive habitat, 44.93%, natural vegetation, 41.55%, topography, 39.76%, rural urban buffer zones, 39.36%. So there's a little bit more of a, a, a split divide. Um, 
there's a, you know, some changes when we look at the county. Uh, although panoramic views were top rated, the next um, top priority was topography, followed by natural vegetation, sensitive habitat, ridge lines, and rural urban buffer zones. But again, this is not inconsistent with what, we, what we've heard about south of Potrero is people want to, you know, try and preserve as much of the natural beauty as possible. Mayor Lara, to, excuse me, Council Member Lara. To topography, are you just looking at mountains or are you talking about change, any change in elevation? No, we're looking at what's already what's already there. Um, so thinking about all the, the topography, the way it looks, it's, it's trying to preserve what's okay. what's there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, on the county ones, ridge lines show up, but ridge lines does not show up in the non-county. Yeah. The top selections. So again, I want to remind you these are the top-rated responses. So sure. if we in this specific um, question, um, I think all the responses were fairly close to one another. And so we wanted to show you a selection, a sliver, right, of the top five. Um, but I'd be careful with saying, in this case, that one did not show up. Um, because um, this is definitely an area where people were split, aside from panoramic views, which is a number one response across both groups. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so while well, that question was about preserving, this is now a question about incorporating. So are there features that people would like to incorporate? Um, the top three things that came up, access to open space, 57.06%, conservation development, 46.32%, um, and three limits on skilled homes, 43.14%. Uh, the conservation development has to do with how much you can actually build right, on, a, on a parcel. Um, for community members that identify living in the county, these were also their top three choices. So uh, going back to other comments, so what were people saying in other responses? Um, from what we can see, there's there's a perception that areas south of the city are open space and rural, right? Um, what, do, what do people say in response to that? One, there's too many people in the city. There's the, bringing in more, more houses is going to generate more traffic and infrastructure impacts. Um, two, there's already sufficient housing in the city, right? So why do we have to build more? Um, two, um, there's, there's, a, there's also an interest in well thought out planning, right? And so people uh, refer to, hey, if we're going to do this planning, we also want to make sure that there's planning for K through 12 schools. Um, we want to make sure that there's a diverse retail and commercial uses. Um, and within this, there's opportunities for big box stores, and there's also opportunities for small businesses. Um, three, balanced growth. Right? How, how can we grow while thinking about the way um, in which our community can try and promote sustainability? And sort of big theme number three, there's an interest in innovative, flexible work opportunities. So the, the last piece of our presentation then is to talk about what Monica just mentioned, how what are the implications of growth of the land use alternatives that we are discussing with you? So based on the 2015 uh, data that we have, there are 13,563 households within the city. city. And there's about 5,800 jobs. And what that tells us is that the jobs housing ratio within the city is 0.42. Now, the ideal jobs housing balance is about an equal number of jobs to the number of homes. So it should be 1.0. Um, the idea behind that is that um, that helps first keep your economy more diversified. You have more opportunities for residents to work in the same city that they live in. So there are shorter commute times. There's less traffic impacts because you don't have um, long uh, drive times uh, during the peak travel hours. Um, so there are multiple reasons why uh, 1.0 jobs housing balance is, um, is considered desirable or even higher if possible. Um, SCAG, which is the Southern California Association of Government, uh, makes, um, when they prepare their RTP, which is the Regional Transportation Plan, uh, pro makes projections for various cities. So for the in entire Inland Empire, they look at all the various cities and the county areas within it, and they say, we think this is what the projection, what we think the absorption uh, of new homes and jobs would be. So based on the last round of information that they put out, 
they projected that within city limits, there would be about 25,000 homes and about 18,000 jobs, which gives us a jobs housing balance of 0.7. So that's better than what's today, but it's still not ideal. It's not, it's not as close to the 1.0 that we would want to see in a community and where we can say this is a well-balanced and um, diversified economy. So just based on pure calculations, not what the market would bear, just build out projections for the city and the areas within the sphere of influence. Uh, the preferred alternative that we, uh, that's under discussion right now, uh, projects uh, about 33,700 households within the city and the sphere of influence, what's on, in the general plan boundaries and about 35,700 jobs, uh, which equates to a 1.06 um, ratio of jobs uh, to homes, which is um, where you would want to be. Uh, again, the caveat here is this is what the numbers are telling us. If every single parcel develops, we know that will not happen. Uh, once we get approval uh, today on the preferred uh, or final direction on the preferred land use plan, um, our, the economist on our team will begin to look at these numbers and uh, give us some feedback as to how many of these uh, units and jobs can actually are more feasible within the time uh, frame of the general plan that's um, under consideration. They'll also give us some information about what the fiscal impacts are to the city in terms of in terms of providing services to these um, new households, future households, and what the benefits of additional job jobs uh, is to to the city's coffers. So those are all uh, additional studies that'll uh, come after we have direction from from council today. Um, we will also be uh, looking at a citywide mobility analysis. So um, we will be looking at what kind of um, roadways might be necessary to provide connectivity within the city and the sphere to access each of these projected neighborhoods as well as um, improved connections to the, the two major freeways and the major arterials within the city. And, um, once we have that, uh, we'll be preparing the general plan uh, document with goals and policies, which will help guide uh, guide you as you make uh, land use decisions in the future. And with that, we can open it up for any questions that you might have. Uh, and uh, once uh, yeah, once we've answered those, if you'd like to open it up to the public. And here's the preferred. Uh, alternative map again in case you have any specific questions. Thank you. Uh, open it up to questions from council. And this is a workshop, so it's a little bit more informal than typical council. So we'll just get questions as they appear from any uh, council member. And then um, if there are questions from the uh, public that are here, um, if you have a question, you're welcome to fill out a request to speak and come to the podium and apply all the usual standards of public comments to uh, when you come up and ask your question. But I'll open it up to council first. Um, uh, Mayor, may I make a suggestion? Sure. I'd like to withhold any questions I have until I hear the public comments. That's Does good. everyone else agree yeah. with that one? Yeah, why don't we do that? All right. Because we um, have a big uh, public turnout today, so we'd like to make sure that we get through as many questions as you may have. So, um, Would you like me to answer questions as they come up, or do you want us to have... Uh, they can uh, state their question, and then um, it's probably going to be an answer that comes from you um, or Monica or Rebecca, mm -hmm. and whoever's appropriate will ask them to get up and add to the uh, answer if we could. All right, thank you. Uh, so uh, do I have to open the public hearing in order to take the questions? Uh, just public comment, yes. Okay, I will open public comment at 5.40.
I do have a written comment that was submitted, so I will um, pass that out. Um, and then we will, um, okay. in the meantime, we'll go through these. So, yes, please. All right, why don't we go to the, um, the first person who wants to speak, and then we'll, after everybody gets the written one, then we'll okay. go to that one. First speaker is Mary Daniel. Thank you. My name is Mary Daniel, and I live at 14250 South Beaumont Avenue, Highway 79. I just have a few comments about this proposed general plan. First of all, if this plan is adopted, you really are going to have to stop saying that small town atmosphere. That <laughs> is totally gone. This plan is a build out for a very large city. There will be no small town left. Most of the sphere of influence south of Beaumont, where I live, has some kind of land use indicated for development, for houses, for factories, or warehouses, or commercial development. Something is going to be built on just about every piece of ground out there. The only open space is the land that's already been preserved a long time ago. I guess we should be glad of that. Um, and that minuscule green circle that's called a beltway. Otherwise, the land use in the southern part of the sphere of influence indicates heavy development in one form or another. And much of that development is going to be crammed onto the back of Highway 79. These people can have not have gone out to Highway 79. That is a traffic nightmare already. With a roadway that has more cars than it can handle, along with an intersection that is an atrocity, how smart is it to even think about adding an urban village, which is up to 20 dwelling units an acre, a highway commercial center with big box stores and large format retailers, not to mention the planned high density residential, which can have up to 30 dwellings per acre. Highway 79 is going to be gridlocked from morning to night, or it's going to be turned into another freeway that's right in the middle of Beaumont. I went back and read some of the comments from the uh, several surveys that this uh, consultant did, and I hope that each of you will take the time to do that, because these are the comments from people who actually live here, and they should be the ones you're listening to, rather than taking only the word of a consulting company hired to do a job which evidently was to devise a plan to make Beaumont into a metropolis. A large number of the comments said that the city should concentrate on making better what we already have, building the infrastructure that was neglected by the previous administration, and stop indiscriminately adding more houses and warehouses. And I certainly agree with this and have spoken many times on it. So my advice would be that while going through this general plan process, instead of having a consultant tell you all the ways you can make Beaumont bigger, why don't you listen to the people who live here and elected you to represent them and concentrate on finding ways to make Beaumont better? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Daniels. Pass it on. Robert Moreno. <laughs> My name is Roberto Moreno. I live at 33 Nutwood Avenue. Um, just had a uh, point that I needed to bring up to the council as well. Even though we are building this, uh, supposed to be building these areas here down south, uh, some of my local neighbors wanted me to ask the council, and this is not to do with the building as, as far as more parking. Uh, they've noticed that in their particular neighborhood, they've seen a lot of their, you know, neighbors and so forth come in and do a lot of parking of commercial vehicles. Uh, so when they're having events, like so during the weekends, a lot of these homeowners park a lot of their commercial vehicles in our, you know, streets, so a lot of their visitors who are coming to the party or the gathering don't have no place to park. So they're wondering if there's going to be some kind of a code established by the city uh, with some maybe volunteer aspects of it 
where we can kind of patrol some of these areas and maybe institute a no parking of commercial, large commercial vehicles or RVs per se on the local streets. That's one of the things that they were concerned about this because they are actually thinking if this does come to fruition that they would be interested in buying some of these homes in the rural areas. Um, that's one of the things that I once wanted to point out. Thank you. Um, could I ask you to make sure that you mention to Ms. Deming the area that you live in, just so she can double check and make sure that uh, the parking issue that you currently have is in compliance with what we expect. Would that be all right, Rebecca? Okay, make sure. Rebecca, would you just raise your hand so he knows who you are? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your comments. Next speaker is Judy Bingham. Judy Bingham, 115 Minnesota. I was around for the last general plan, and that general plan uh, was strictly done so that Urban Logic could steal bond money. Also, uh, the, the general plan, they didn't listen to all of us. So you see what happened to Beaumont, the congestion and everything we have. Now, I have a couple of questions. Uh, what is the part in blue up there? Uh, I don't see a co corresponding color. Is that warehouses? That's existing. Existing what? Uh, you, excuse me. You said you have three questions. Why don't you ask all three, and then she can address all of them. <clears throat> exactly what is? south of Potrero, and by that I mean, where is Potrero crossing the 79? Is it gonna be at First Street? And show me on that map where First Street is. And um, there's a little road called Mellow Lane. Now I wonder why Dave and Ernie named it Mellow Lane with tongue in cheek, because that's where they stole all the money from the Mellow Roos bonds. Uh, so I want to know where this Potrero is going into. And, you know, Rebecca, you were a part of this. You know it. We've listened to you lie for years. There were questions that, yeah. could you answer, please? If you, if you don't have the answer on anything, you can just um, say so and get back to us. But sure. Firstly, as far as Potrero is concerned, at this point, all we know is a uh, interchange is being planned at Potrero. I believe the grand um, groundbreaking was just uh, last week. Uh, the final alignment of Potrero is still undecided. Um, we, we are not aware of what the final decision for that would be. Uh, we do know it will come down. Uh, from the from 60 and at, at some point it'll join up with uh, highway 79 and that's about the information we have um, in terms of what these blue areas are these are currently designated industrial or industrial commercial overlay and um, we the new general plan uh, is maintaining those designations okay. thank you uh, and Ask a go ahead. Uh, um, first Street is right there. Why does it go through my property? Um, so it, no. actually, there is a, a street called Potrero that is uh, parallel right. to First it, Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's one, it, but the connection. But I think better to answer the question is if you could sort of draw a circle on what area you're considering south of Potrero. Uh, so the area we are considering south of Potrero is all of this. Uh, it's today zoned uh, half acre lots in the county zoning. And in the, in the current general plan there, it's again uh, designated for half acre lots. What this plan is doing is reducing the intensity in this entire area dramatically from half acre lots to either 10 acre lots or 40 acre lots. Okay. So as to preserve the, the existing natural 
um, condition that's there today. Okay, so that would override the county's half a, um, half acre lots to make it ten. Or um, at, at no, the zoning, the county zoning is will not be overridden automatically. Uh, the after the general plan is adopted, the city can work with the county for them to update their zoning to uh, to the to be consistent with the general plan. Uh, another option for the city would be to uh, consider annexation. Um, I, it is not under uh, under uh, consideration to my end at, at all at this point, but that is certainly an option for the city to consider in the future. So in areas w like this, which is basically the sphere of influence, mm -hmm. uh, regardless if we said at one um, or t 10 acre lots, as long as it's not annexed into the city, then the county could approve developments in that in those areas at the half acre lots that they've zoned for, correct? Uh, technically, yes, but the county also uh, works with cities to make sure that their general plan, that the city's general plan is consistent with their zoning, oh. and the city's, the county is going through an update to their, the county general plan now, and it's a good time to have coordination with them so that uh, in the end, the city's vision for the sphere uh, and the county's vision for the sphere are consistent. Thank you. And then the third option, obviously, is as being our vision for the area, it would be subject to applicants' annexation. This is what we would tell them we would be looking for at annexation the kinds of land uses um, if they were to propose it. Annexation. Thank you. Next speaker. Next speaker is Ron Roy. Okay, well, I think that something is definitely going right tonight to have this kind of a crowd. I, I think this is one of the best things I've ever seen. I think. Well, that's another story, but I'm just saying, I see democracy at work here, and I do think this is an example of why you need workshops for every major issue in conjunction with a committee issue, a committee where you have, like, nobody showing up, okay? And uh, this is fantastic. A um, lot of issues going on here. I wanted to make some corrections, if I may. The blue area that's south of Oak Valley Parkway has changed because of the Heartland Pacific uh, plan housing project that blue area which is south of Oak Valley that's kind of centered by the bridge to nowhere is now housing so you should change that also the Hoy Ranch at Jackrabbit Trail the uh, area south of the Hidden Springs Industrial Park you should put in the MHACP holdings that are county holdings that's south that has all been dedicated that's about 300 acres if I may I got a minute and 50 seconds. <laughs> yeah. We can't talk more three this minutes. Is, this has now been dedicated as MHACP. So you should add that map on ASAP. Okay. So, um, uh, again, I think this is important. This should be designed by the residents of the community. And that should take precedence over any kind of consultant that comes in. Let them, let the citizens do that. I, I'm ha you know, this is a hardcore issue um, and I'm in favor of preserving as much open space as possible and concentrating any kind of growth around our core which for me is probably Bowman Avenue as it goes over the 10 freeway that's to me the centerpiece so as as you can concentrate it the more the better so what I would like to say is um, again uh, Council Member White's touching on a really touchy issue, which is a lot of this is unincorporated area, and we're at battle with the county zoning. I wish that you don't have to have a project every time for a city or a county. You know, why do you need a project to annex? Can't you just go to the LAFCO and say, we're going to annex for open space? And I know there's rules and regulations. Um, as far as setbacks, you know, when you drive through on the streets, you can't see the mountains even with one story. So I do think with multi-story, uh, you can get away with it. I think you can do it. I, I'll get in trouble for saying that, but look at other cities like the Coachella Valley. They have six-story uh, limits. So I think if you do the setbacks, 
I think you can achieve the same effect. We have beautiful mountains. Let's look at other areas that have that. Uh, but again, I do think the more you can preserve the open space, the better. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Next speaker. Next speaker is Cliff Strand. I'm sorry, would you? Ah, oh, all right. Good evening. Uh, I'm Cliff Strand, and I represent Wayne Lamb of the Lamb Trust, which is one of your larger property owners. It, with, it, it's outside of your city limits, but it abuts your city limits and is affected, affected by this. Um, Mr. Lamb is represented by Paul Mary Tyler, the law firm. Nobody has been noticed of this. I happened to stumble across this by a call to Rebecca about a couple weeks ago. And uh, so we'd like to have been given the opportunity to offer our input, and we would still like to do that. Um, we, uh, I'm hearing everything that's going on here, and I'm agreeing with a lot of it. We're not looking for any, to do anything high density on what we, what we have. We can see a multi-use to the property and, and some low density, very low density residential in the hills with views, dynamic views up there. So we're right on Jackrabbit Trail. We also do have an easement that goes right by the warehouse that's under construction. I forgot the name of the project. You mentioned it before coming off of 4th Street and it dead ends right into our property. So we have two points of access and we're trying to figure out what we're gonna do at this stage of the game. So um, I'd sure like to be on record that, that we have not been noticed. Okay? Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Um, yes, we, uh, we're going to take care of that. Are you going to speak with him and set up a time and make sure he has all the documentation and an opportunity to talk to us? Yeah, as, as was specified in the notice as well as on our website, we do have a website set up where people can sign up to receive additional notifications. Our notification went out using our GIS data from the county and the landowner addresses. We do have a few that bounce back, so if people have canceled their forwardings or they've changed their address on vacant property, they've moved or relocated but didn't change their address within the county as the property owner address, we did have quite a few come back. Um, so we used the best information we had available to send out the notices. Um, but we encourage everybody who wants to keep up to date on this process to sign up on our website at elevatebeaumont.com and on the, you know, the notify me or um, there's an email list on there for, for them to sign up and we're sending out all the notices through that as well. We send out all the notices for the surveys um, and meetings and workshops and things like that. Um, I'm sorry about the breakdown in communication. Have you um, signed up or given us your information so that we can keep in touch with you going forward? Okay, please make sure. And again, um, it's unfortunate in the breakdown. Fair enough. Thank you. And the last speaker I have is Stacy Sago. Uh, I'm sorry. That's right. I'd like to call. Okay. Hello, my name is Stacy Sago, and I live in Sundance. I'm, I'm kind of new to this. Uh, I received no notice. It, uh, I stumbled across it from a girlfriend who accidentally found it on Facebook. So I don't know what went out. Um, but I certainly didn't know where I would have been here before. Um, just a couple of things. Um, do we have any idea what type of businesses are coming to Beaumont? Or ours, is this just going to be new digs for the tattoo, the tire, and the dollar store that we have on every block? Uh, what is here to keep them here? I don't know where all these jobs are coming from. How many jobs can McDonald's actually, you know, people, how, how, how many can they hire? Um, when I drive down Sixth or Beaumont Avenue, trying to get to the freeway, which is a mile from my house, it's an average of 10 to 15 minutes. I would sit there through three stop signs. So sometimes I go through town. Going through town, I see boarded up buildings, graffiti, crappy lots. Um, is this what's going to happen after you put all this lovely stuff in a nice box and put a nice bow on it 
I don't know why businesses, why you think all these businesses are going to stay when they don't. They come and they go, they come and they go. Is this going to be a pretty ghost town? I don't know if you can answer this. I don't know if you have any idea what type of businesses, who you're trying to, to come here to get. But I think that's also important. I don't need tires. I don't want a tattoo. And I rarely go to the dollar store. So I drive 40 minutes to Palm Desert or I drive 20 minutes into Redlands or shop after work because I work in Redlands. There's nothing around here for me to stay in. Um, I don't go to Walmart. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's basically, it's hard for me to focus on anything new that you're trying to present with this lovely pr presentation and your colored maps. When I do drive over potholes, in the 13 years I've lived here, two streets that I frequent have been paved and that's it. Uh, it's hard for me to envision anything pleasant in the surroundings when it takes me three and four signals to get through Highland Springs down to the down to the freeway. So I think maybe trying to fix what we already have and, and make us feel better about it might improve our outlook and, and maybe enable us to look to the future. Right now I can't because the present is so disturbing. Thank, Thank you. you. No other speakers. Oh. If I can clarify on the notification, it did not go to every person in the city. It went as discussed at the 19th meeting to the involved transform. So the Sundance would not have received notification. So I just want to make clear of that survey. The way we tried to get out to everyone in the city was through the website, through social media, through next door. Um, we had originally for people of kids in the um, school district, we sent out the original flyer and newsletter in the beginning to let people know of the website to sign up. Um, through the school district system, that kind of thing. Thank you. I do live in Boulder. No other speakers. Okay. Do you um, want to? Do you want me to read the letter, or do you want to read it? Whichever you would like. I handed it out so that okay. all of you have I'll a copy. Read the letter. And there's we'll a copy get, back. So we can move on. Okay. This is a public comment letter um, that I'm going to read. It was passed out and there may be some at the back, right? Rebecca, we would like to respond to your notice of general plan update. As residents of the affected area, we are not in favor of the proposed changes for the following reasons. One, the land is currently rural residential and has been planned that way for years. Please review the existing general plan map. Please physically review the area, drive through it, and see how it currently is established. The rural nature of the area was planned to balance the higher density of the north part of the city. Two, the water is in shortage in a shortage in the Beaumont and Pass area. The southern areas of Beaumont have been planned as rural and have a low water usage. To change this area to a higher density is not feasible as there is not enough water. Three, this area is on septic tanks as the density is very low. To add additional sewage capacity will not work, as the sewer plant is already at capacity. Again, changing the zoning and increasing the density will greatly raise the sewer plant size and requirements, which have been designed for the lower usage. The sewer piping system has not been designed to handle this additional density. The piping system runs down First Street and was designed for the smaller southern density. This would create extremely high costs to install our sewer system to this area. Four, the roadway system will not support the additional density. The majority of the roads are existing in this area. The roads were designed for rural residential density and will not support the proposed changes. Furthermore, the at-grade railroad crossing at California in Veal already caused significant traffic. These changes will greatly add to this congested area. Five, the four new areas have not been planned well as they butt directly up against the areas of 40-acre lots. Planning should allow for transitions from high density to low density. The existing general plan allows for these transitions. Therefore, there should be no changes. Six, since these are very significant changes, it would be appropriate for the city to have proper traffic, water, and sewer studies conducted, 
with proper public comment periods prior to making such a change. Making this change without these studies would be improper and ill-advised. Seven, we believe that traditional neighborhood, the traditional neighborhood area and the jobs-oriented area proposed should be rural residential, high, and should extend from Highway 79 westerly for the entire area. Eight, we believe the jobs-oriented area should be moved to the urban village south area east of Highway 79. Nine, we believe the urban village south area should be omitted from this general plan. Ten, we believe the high-density residential should be changed into traditional neighborhoods. Eleven, we believe the rural residential low and rural residential high designations should stay as newly planned. Making these changes as proposed will have many negative impacts which the city has yet to mitigate or even quantify. For this and the reasons above, we ask that the city not change the zoning at this time or change the zoning to the preferred levels we've listed above in items 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Thank you, Stacy and Jim Love. World's biggest hypocrites. Okay. That's the end of the public hearing? Yes. You All right. I will close the public hearing at 6.05 and open it up now to council. Comments and questions. Yes. Council okay. Member White. Uh, no, I agree with Mr. Roy that this is great that we have a big attendance because uh, this is an important issue. The thing that I struggle with, as we all would like the open space, and I'm, and I'm in favor of that as well, uh, but also a lot of the high requests and even the last speaker brought up the fact that we have to leave our city to, to go to restaurants, to go to movie theaters, to go to any of those um, type of amenities. So, and then the, uh, also the issue was brought up about maintaining and repairing our roads. And they haven't been maintained or repaired um, for, uh, there was a quite some time when they weren't being maintained or repaired because the funds were not there, even though we did not know that the funds were not there. That I, when I say we, I mean the citizens did not know. Um, and we have started a uh, road maintenance plan that's starting to bring that all back. But the question you asked was what kind of businesses are going to come to Beaumont? And the kinds of businesses that we all want, I believe, um, are the kinds that everyone's talking to me about, movie theaters, Costco, Target, uh, locations like that, um, restaurants, something different, I agree, than dollar stores and, and auto repair shops. Those types of businesses are not coming to Beaumont because in their mind, we don't have the growth and we don't have the population that they need to, to prosper here. So one thing that we have to consider when we're looking at this general plan is what message are we sending to what businesses? If we, if we feel that we are comfortable with the businesses we have here and the number of jobs we have here, then we need to send a message to those, um, to those companies that there will not be any more growth in Beaumont. We want to stay as we are. If we want some of the other things, we don't want to drive to the desert or we don't want to drive to Redlands, then we need to send a message that we are going to grow in a, a balanced way my opinion. Um, tonight, the decision that we're looking at is just to give direction to move this on. We're not making a decision tonight on the general plan that is written in stone. Um, we wanted to hold more of these. I don't even think this workshop tonight was on the schedule of issues that we were talking about. Um, it was something that came up last time when we felt that some people in the sphere of influence were left out of the discussion. We decided, well, let's hold a workshop. Uh, even though it's not on the schedule, let's throw in a workshop and see what we can do to move forward. Um, so, also to respond to Mr. Roy's uh, comment about why don't we just annex all the open land. Annexation is not something that's, that's taking of land. The city cannot just go and say we want you to be part of the city. It has to come from the property owners. So the property owners have to come to the city or we could go to the property owners. But the property owners are the ones who have to agree to annex into the town. So we can't just do that. Um, so now I have a couple questions. Um, and Rebecca, you can probably help me on these. Um, have we, in, in, the, in these surveys or in the conversations, have we put out the question, and I think we could ask everyone here tonight, um, are you okay with not having restaurants, movie theaters, open air shopping in, in exchange for open space? 
I mean, has that been an option? On, I mean, I think that's a question that there, you know, if you, if you listen to what's been said here tonight, there's a number of people here who would say, no, I don't want any of that. I want as much open space as possible. And then I think there's some that are on the other end that would say, no, I'm willing to give up some of the open space in order to get some of the other items. Has that been an either or? I don't believe it's been an either or. It's been more what do you want to see come to the city. Okay. We actually think we are we are getting to the best of both worlds with the plan as proposed. We are saying that in downtown, in the urban village, um, in downtown, along Beaumont Avenue, you could, and the urban village area that's uh, along, uh, along Highway 79, you can get the kind of amenities uh, so that residents don't have to go to the desert or to Redlands, while at the same time, we are protecting a lot of the open space resources that, uh, that the community feels so strongly about. So the, the concept behind the, the land use map is is to get to the to both those objectives of the community, not and it, it really isn't an either or okay uh, choice. And and the reason I bring that up is uh, you know just recently this weekend I was in a brand new home um, at a Super Bowl party and a lot of the neighbors in the area are also brand new homes lived here six seven months, and when you talk to people who are moving here now, they're moving here because of what's here and also because of the possibilities of what can come here. And I'll finish with one last comment. Um, a city's revenues are not on Melrose funds. The Melrose funds are to build infrastructures for the communities and the neighbors and the new developments. We repair our roads, we pay for police and service, um, and we offer services to the community through sales tax and property tax. And if we can't project a sales tax growth or a property tax growth, sales tax growth through more businesses coming in and less of our tax money going to Redlands or to Palm Desert, if we can't chart for that growth and we can't plan for more property tax revenue as well, then as a city, we cannot plan the CIP projects, the capital improvement projects like the interchanges, the streets, the roads. All of us have been here less, just over three years. We were not involved with the earlier planning of the city or the maintaining of the city. And we, we want direction from you. I mean, if it's overwhelming that the community wants us to stop all kinds of growth and move on to open space, I don't see any of us would be going against that. But I don't know that that's, that's the, the direction that most of the people in the community want to go. Right, and actually what might be useful here is um, in our survey we had some of the larger trends which are um, ongoing in the Inland Empire um, and we asked the question, do you think the city should plan for, for change? And you know, we had over 93% of respondents saying yes. And I'd just like to briefly, if I may, go over the, the trends that we had uh, presented in the survey. Firstly, by 2040, there will be a million more people in Riverside County than there are today. And that's going to happen regardless of where they go. So Beaumont will get a portion of that population increase. So this, for the city, should plan where those new residents might go in a more thoughtful manner than just track development across the board, half acre lots everywhere, right? Um, another piece is there are 13 mega uh, warehouses that have been built from 2016, 2010 to 20, 2016 in the Inland Empire. Now, we are not proposing the, that kind of growth here, but there is a market for smaller, more sensitive industrial growth, which do bring well-paying jobs to the area. So. Again, there's the growth happening in the Inland Empire that the city can be strategic about targeting what kind of jobs uh, you want to see. You don't want large warehouses or distribution centers where there's hardly any jobs, but it's just acres and acres of stuffs being stored in them. Um, the third <clears throat> trend which we have noticed is, again, the growth in baby boomer on the population in the in the, in, in the Inland Empire or in Riverside uh, 
uh, county, it's supposed to more than double in that area. So as people grow older, the kind of homes they're looking for are different than a single family home with a large yard to maintain. You know, and this has been noticed across the country as fa as baby boomers age, they want smaller homes with less maintenance and uh, and um, just smaller homes because they're empty nesters or are past retirement, so they are they have other other um, financial goals um, during their retirement years. And then finally, um, by 2024, that's just in the next five or six years. There's going. Uh, projection of almost a quarter million jobs, non-farm, non-agricultural jobs, projected across San Bernardino and Riverside County. And again, um, can the city be strategic about attracting some of those to the city? And this is a question and a direction um, that we as want from uh, from from the council today. Appreciate that. We have may you, have, Mayor, I'm finished. We may have more from council. I also want to point out that the state does require us to plan for the growth um, coming. Our housing element, although not part of this, we have we ha already have a, a housing element that requires us to plan for each l income level of housing. We will be looking. They've already started at the um, with SCAG and looking at the new numbers. So if we don't plan in this general plan um, here, when we get time to do our housing element portion of the general plan, we may be back here looking at, at the plan. So if we, we can't we can't legally say we're just going to stop growth by the state in our general plan, we have to plan for future um, population. Thank you. Thank you. Council members. Council members. I have a question and statement on, on the uh, on the plan. Uh, we've been talking about the uh, warehouses that are coming in and all those stuff. I'm uh, more on on uh, seeing the uh, Beaumont on growing on on the uh, you know uh, like offices and educational. I mean, I like the uh, you know universities if possible, and also health care in there. I didn't see that on on the on the plan, and uh, I will jump on on one thing on on uh, that gentleman uh, who mentioned about the. Uh, I don't know his name. I mean, the uh, blue area in there, and right now uh, we're we're uh, we have a grand opening on on the uh, Potrero, and we know there's a lot of uh, houses will be built in there, and it's not reflected on our our map in there. Probably uh, we could. Uh, he's he's right. I mean, not to do a, a, a revision on that side, and also again, my my third one. I'm giving you all of this. So, uh, you know, on the downtown. And uh, you mentioned about the uh, pedestrian in there. When I really get involved with the city, I like to see the uh, downtown have a, my word is, it's a friendly pedestrian downtown. And uh, it's not on the plan that uh, there will be a more, more of the uh, pedestrian lane or something uh, from, from, uh, from uh, California to, to uh, 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 Palm. And uh, the way I see it, that's our really, really our downtown. I mean, uh, and uh, I agree with the, uh, you know, uh, growing, I mean, uh, building a uh, two-story or uh, not on the uh, three-story on that side. I agree on that. I mean, I'd, I'd like to see on, 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 your, uh, on, on your presentation or your plan that really what we're going to do on, on those three items in there. Thank you. As previously to respond to that, as previously discussed, um, as part of this RFP process, it does include a downtown specific plan that would come back after we adopt the general plan for the downtown area to to talk about and discuss the very specifics of the zoning code that we want to see in the downtown area. So, so that is part of this whole process. Thank you. Okay. Uh, a couple of questions I have. First of all, on the Urban Village South, the one east of the 79, those 20 units <coughs> per acre, is there a height max that we have on that? Because I didn't see anything about stories or anything. We have not established a height, but we don't believe it'll need to be more than two, primarily two, but with pieces, with components which could go as high as three. Um, 
three could floors we, within. Could we put in a max if we decided that Absolutely. that was necessary? Mm -hmm. Okay, so something to consider for that. And then on your rural residential low on the 40 acre lots, yes. how many do you think that's going to be fitting in that area? Have you um, calculated that? I think there'll be less than 100. 100 units. And can you remind me on the upper right, that red dotted line, what is that representing up on the um, north? Um, is that northeast? Yes. yes. Um, the red dotted line is the sphere boundary. So the it diverges here. This is the sphere edge of the sphere. This is the city boundary. But the, well, we're so, concentrating on the south part, though, right? Right. So this okay. is already uh, on the map. Okay. It's on the map. It's already mapped out. There's no projected okay. change. All right. It's, it's uh, Thank the you. trailer part where you guys have the suit or pass even And then um, Mr. Roy brought up a good point about the um, MHSCP. MHSCP. Yeah. Uh -huh. we, can you incorporate that next time we Absolutely. see the map okay mm -hmm. because i do believe that area does have some of that and he's correct on that my last thing was just pretty much to staff um on the potrero the dotted line um i hate planning and not knowing that something's going to be planned there because I, I just can't imagine that not being i just want to know from staff and i don't need to know now about if that's on the cip as far as an extension of the potrero going around the dotted <laughs> My understanding is the county is planned on taking the lead on that, so okay. we are not determining that alignment. Oh. It is the county. Okay, but there is some Riverside. plan somewhere. Okay. Yeah, there is. Yes, Our there was coordination and discussion, but it is, it is part of the, the county piece of Petrero. Okay. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Could I respond to something Councilmember Santos asked earlier about downtown? Yeah, um, you had mentioned that you would like to see a more pedestrian-friendly atmosphere in mm -hmm. downtown, and that is indeed the intent for it. One of the questions that we asked in our survey for downtown included what are the features you would like to see in downtown to make it seem more a safer, more pedestrian-oriented uh, environment. and. Um, what we heard back were, as Monica um, ex uh, you know, described, was wider sidewalks, so a minimum of 15-foot sidewalks, which allows for opportunities for pedestrians to walk comfortably along uh, along the uh, along any retail that's um, on Sixth Street. Uh, also talked about diagonal parking, which helps slow traffic down on Sixth Street, which again increases. The, both the perception and the reality of, uh, of a safer environment. Um, pedestrian scale lighting, which again, um, with streetscape amenities, provides opportunities for visitors, residents, um, shoppers to actually spend time there in a more uh, comfortable and uh, vibrant environment. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a quick question? Can I? Can I have a quick question for you? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> on your citywide uh, contacts on the uh, household, on your studies, uh, what was the, uh, you know, per household on, on that? I mean, uh, how many people on, on a per household? Because uh, we, we got uh, our projection on 2040, and there will be approximately uh, 33,700 in there. I like that too. I'm, I'm a numbered guy. I like to understand, you know, uh, we're 46,000 right now. So are we going to double that within 20 years? Um, per per, per uh, your, your per household. Right. I don't know if you have a study on that, um, on the area. Uh, I believe the number of persons per household is 3.09. But, um, but as I mentioned earlier, the numbers I showed there were build out numbers not projected to 2040. So those were not 20 year projections, those were um, projections much longer in the future in terms of if every property developed, which is highly unlikely that would happen. So those were just big picture numbers of of what just yeah, keep it there. calculations mm -hmm. tell you, not the reality of how many um, homes we expect to be built within the 2040 time horizon we are looking at. Wow. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a couple questions on the general plan. So, where everybody's, I guess, 
education, there are, what's the year? How many years are they good for? Yeah. Um, the only state mandated time frame is in the housing element. Every other, the, the whole general plan as a whole does not have a required time frame. They recommend 10 to 15 years. Okay. So with our general plan, this is 10 to 15 years in the future that we're trying to look at. Um, within that 10 to 15 years, we have talked about. Um, we're, we're trying to plan further into the future, but we would reevaluate that vision in 10 to 15 years. Right. Um, and within that time frame, we're looking at potentially three different grade separations to help improve traffic. I think Pennsylvania is one, California is another, and the third is, or is it just the two? I don't know if Vili is on the list or not. Just the two. Okay. Um, so, and so we're look, trying to look at 15 years out and to try to plan as best we can to see what citizens of Beaumont want. Uh, one of the things that's very difficult when you plan 15 years out is when you talk to people who want to, to develop businesses, they count rooftops. But whenever you ask them how many rooftops are you looking for, they won't give you a definitive answer. So it's, it's a nebulous type of a, of a number that I've never been able to get a response on. Um, but they do count rooftops. Um, there is a lot of economic leakage that we have from Beaumont. People travel outside of Beaumont to do their shopping. Um, uh, I, wife and I go to Redlands, and traffic isn't much better in Redlands, but they do have shopping. So it's, it's difficult because you want the shopping, but you also want the rural living aspects of what Beaumont has. And unfortunately, it's, it's a difficult blend to get both. And so one of the comments in the letter was the, the transition from low rural residential to high rural residential. Mm -hmm. Is there, there really isn't a transition in between that you can, that I've seen. It's, you we will dictate what the acreage per lot is or per unit, but have you transitioned? Is that? So this is the area that goes right now from high density to rural. Right. Um, there is discussions um, in the text of the document to require a different set of densities on bordering. So you can create a, a transit. Okay. So, you, so there's, there's different ways you can create a transition is what I'm trying to say. You can create more land use categories so that you've got a lot of transitions or you can build it into the text within so many feet is a transition area of a lower density. So if you're going from even from traditional neighborhood to rural low, you can work into the text that says this many feet, 300 feet, okay. 400 feet as a transition area. Okay. And and we would want to see a step down in densities. Okay. And, and then we can include that in the text. And this is the information that we need from the public, mm -hmm. correct? That to help us with that transition or is that just textual language that we would add to the general plan? It, it would be your direction to us if you want to add a new land use category or whether you would like to see it in the text okay. of the general plan, which will come back as, as we move forward. Okay. And at the general plan level, I know that that's a high elevation look at, at the city. We wouldn't see trails at that point either. That would be a lower, like a specific plan type of view, or would you want to do that at this level? Similar to the circulation element, we cover the bigger items within the general plan, including trails and connections. Okay. When you get to very specific locations, that's where you see it in the specific plan. Um, as it's shown in here, you kind of have more of a, a nebulous area because we don't know how the development would occur and where those open spaces um, can connect for, for linkages. And so we've kind of left it as a as more of a nebulous area. And so the same thing, we do have a plan for trails in the general plan, and we would update that and take a look at it and, and try and make sure we're linking across the city. Um, currently, our general plan talks about the linkage through the Edison easement. So, okay. we, so we do refer to that and we do plan for it in the general plan. Okay. And then my last comment is, for me, I think, and, and well, for me personally, it would be nice to get a hard line um, break between the city boundary and the county boundary okay. so that people can see that we're also trying to plan for impacts that the current county zoning has or potentially mm -hmm. could have on the city and that if we don't reduce that, that density or we don't 
do something about that, that the county can potentially build a higher density development right on our border, and we would miss the opportunity to try to plan for that in the future. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, we, we, we show the city boundary. Again, we don't control the county. I understand so that. We, we can work with them as best as we can, as, as was mentioned. If this is the preferred, if you guys give us direction, um, what we need to move forward on a preferred alternative, we are planning on sending it to the county so that we don't get too late in their general plan process. Right. But we can't guarantee they want to sit down at the table and discuss it. Mm -hmm. And really, then it becomes more of a vision for our city at annexation time. Right. The biggest problem you're going to have in the county with higher density development is whether it can be held without city sewer. Um, right. Higher density development may have to apply to annex, and then they would have to meet our general plan right. um, to get those services if that's you know the direction the city was going in. And it was just hard for me to pick up the city yeah, boundary. That's it's, all it's a black see. it's a black line. It's the maps are bad. I'm old. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all I have. Thank all you, right. Mayor. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple of quick questions, and um, yeah. we're about a half hour behind, so hopefully um, I can get through them real quickly. One of them was uh, you talked about the retail housing mix where there's retail and housing behind. Mm -hmm. it, are you talking about a live-work setup? Are you talking about just having housing zoned behind retail, which you so um, the one that was talking about the housing in the survey behind is in our is in our downtown. So there may be some multifamily apartments behind retail mm -hmm. fronting Sixth Street. So, um, there could be the more of the live work um, was set more in the idea of that urban village where you okay. might have apartments above um shops or or other things like that um, but in the one where it talked about homes behind retail that discussion was related to our downtown and how we want to um, create that lively downtown okay and thank you and the um i agree with council member santos that um in some areas you could probably uh, go up to the two-story if the setback was appropriate um, it it might not affect the views and still give us um, good opportunities without degrading the views. And, and one of the things I'd like to consider too is, uh, and I'm, I'll probably bring this up again, is making sure that the topography on the hillsides is protected mm -hmm. so that it's both safe as well as visually pleasing mm -hmm. to us. And this line between the low and the high rural residential was drawn to try and match the topography okay. to, to the higher topography we created lower density where there's where there's less of a mountainous terrain is where the higher density comes into play so we did take into take that into account in okay. putting this together Good. and the downtown area um that was the downtown area the existing downtown area they have been crying for improved parking uh, crosswalks uh, traffic to go slower through there mm -hmm. um, they currently feel as if their businesses are being starved by um, not the best management for commerce for them in those small businesses and um, and I I agree with a comment that was made earlier that um, we need better choices for the small businesses we don't need necessarily and i don't want to pick in any one type of business but we uh definitely need an improvement in the mix and part of the general plan that i see uh, that works for that is if you owned a small commercial property in the downtown area now and you wanted to sell it and you wanted somebody to build on it um, it would be hard to attract someone other than a uh, tattoo parlor or tire shop, as the uh, speaker mentioned. Uh, and if we do this right, we are really hoping to be able to get a better variety and a better quality of small business, because I think small business is a good, healthy uh, job generator for our kids when they need our, their first job and for many in the community. I think square footage, they generate a lot more jobs than warehouses do, that's for sure. So um, I'd like to see better quality small businesses. Um, the, um, 
the last thing that I want to mention is uh, the leakage. The leakage has been a big concern of the city for a while. Um, I'm in, we could commute together to Redlands or to Palm Desert to go to restaurants or to do some shopping. And we need that sales dollar to remain here um, because we need to be able to spread out that revenue for the city on a more sustainable basis. The other thing is I look at what's behind that and that is our property values. Our property values for our houses that we currently have where you're, everybody's concerned about making sure that we protect that and the value of our property gets more sound when there's a healthier variety of choices in the community. Somebody wants to buy your house someday more strongly if you decide to sell it, if there are good restaurant choices or maybe a movie theater. Uh, if we limit the choices or go down even more in the choices that we currently have, it's going to affect you in the pocketbook. And uh, you don't always think about that until later. So there's a bit of leadership on property values that has to happen with this general plan so that we make sure that we do our best job that we can on protecting your property values. And if you don't own um, residential but you own a small commercial lot, the same is true for you. It's the property value of your commercial lot, and you have a right to have that respected, whether it's a residential property or a commercial property. So with that, if there are no more questions, we are a half hour, uh, unless you want to respond, Rebecca. No, but we do need a formal consensus for direction and so that we can start moving where forward. I was headed. Thank so you, thank sorry. You. We are just uh, 35 minutes now over. Um, I really applaud you all for coming out and for caring about the general plan. Uh, everything that you said did not fall in deaf ears. Uh, your comments are highly valued. Um, follow up if I've asked you to go ahead and leave your address or make sure that you're in a communication loop. And um, we will, again, this is not approving the general plan tonight. This is a motion to move forward further in the process uh, and move on to an EIR. So do I have a motion from a council member? Let me, um, before we do that, just let me clarify the process one more time here. According to the schematic, we are approving this to go forward. And then your next um, time that you see us, what will we expect? Um. The next step after this is approved is just we would have our scoping meeting for the EAR, but we would do that at the planning commission level and invite the people out for the scoping meeting. Um, and then we'd start preparing. We'd meet back with you um, as we start to talk about policies and, and stuff within the general plan. Okay. And at what point can we modify if we need to along the way? Um, there's, as we, as we come back with specific, obviously this doesn't have the exact lot lines. Right. So as we come back with specific areas, minor movements um, are available to, to the council. The biggest concern is a major change could require us to start back over with an EIR, new costs that would need to be approved um, to start over. So this really is the preferred alternative that we're basing all of our analysis on, our traffic analysis, our EIR, our feasibility study, all of that, that we, we need a map to start those analysis. Um, and so any changes, if they're not minor in nature, could require additional revisions and additional costs added to the project. Okay. Uh, before you sit down, the letter um, uh, number six talked about it would be appropriate for the city to have proper traffic, water, and sewer studies. That's all part of the EIR process, correct? All mitigation measures are reviewed as part of the, correct, the EIR. Okay. Thank you. So um, we need a motion to direct staff on a preferred alternative for moving forward with the general plan and the environmental impact report. Do I have a motion? So you are looking for concession that we're okay with what you have here, correct? Or if we have changes we need to make, we need to voice those right now. That's our request. Okay. Yes, if you have, if you want to make a motion with a change, and uh, and move forward with a change, 
that's great. Otherwise, if you want to move forward with as is, that's what we're looking for. I have a Do question. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mayor. So is it my understanding then that, that this proposed refined uh, preferred alternative had input from the committees that were created and they've all approved and, and bought off on these? Or That's what we brought we brought back to you at the December 19th meeting, the three different that came up, one from the survey, one from the task force, okay. um, and we combined them into this refined alternative um, to, to come up with kind of a combination of community task force right. um, you. to you. I appreciate that, Rebecca. Thank mm -hmm. you. And uh, Rebecca, you will take input on clarification on the maps, et cetera. Um, all of that will go into what you bring forward, correct? In other words, um, you know, where someone questioned and said that, you know, we need to define that there's now a housing element that's within a particular area. If there's any corrections, you are putting that into your your the, documentation the, the documentation will have the details correct sure. as talked about when policies for transition areas those kind of things those will all come out as we write the document all right i move that we accept this general plan as a consensus and move on to the uh, eir and traffic sewer water studies that come with that do i have a second i'll second councilmember santos Yes. Councilmember White? Yes. Councilmember Lara? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Martinez? Yes. Mayor Carroll? Yes. With that, I will close the workshop for the general plan at 640.